Welcome to the second part of News Centre. The Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission is today clearing governors and MPs even as campaigns heat up ahead of the August general election. We have been keeping an eye on some of those aspirants who are currently before the IEBC and we have our teams on the ground for you as well. <clears throat> so... The big stories this morning, of course, governors and members of parliament are before the IBC seeking clearance. We also do know that uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta and his deputy William Ruto uh, will be in all Kalau. That should be the first stop that the president will be making uh, this morning. And we will be speaking to our Victor Ogale, who's on the ground for us. Um, in a bit, but also Peter Kenneth has also just been cleared by the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission to run for the Nairobi gubernatorial seat. So those are the top stories as at this hour. So let me see if we can speak to Victor Ogale, who's in Ol Kalau, where we expect the president there any moment from now. Ogale, can you hear me? Good morning. Well, uh, Linda, the mood here in Nyandarwa County, rather in Old Kalau, is one that can be categorized, rather explained as one that is expectant. The people here are eager to see the head of state and his deputy, William Ruto. Remember the last time the duo set foot here in Nyandarwa County was in early February during the mass voter registration mobilization campaign. Ogale. Ogale, listen, I am so sorry I have to interject, but I need to cross over to Kasarani, where Peter Kenneth is currently addressing the press. He's just been cleared by the IBC. Let's listen in. Validly nominated for the governorship of Nairobi. I've told the returning officer, we just expect a fair, free, and credible elections. We want to campaign, to tell the people of Nairobi what we can do for them. We have very good track record to work for them. Dan and I bring enough synergies to ensure that Nairobi can regain its glory. We are aware there are candidates who have no agenda and uh, destined to disrupt our campaigns. But we are ready. I think the people of Nairobi want good ideas, not acts of theatrics and acts of disruptions. We want to conduct mature campaigns that will endear us to the people. And we start our campaigns on Monday and we'll visit all the constituencies and do door to door. So we are very ready for this. And we want to assure our opponents to be ready for what we will unleash in terms of campaigning and in terms of selling ideas to the people of Nairobi. The last four years have been a nightmare for Nairobi, despite almost 100 billion being pumped in through revenues and allocations. We must reverse that. We must ensure service delivery is key. We must empower our many young people who are jobless, who are feeling hopeless and helpless. We must reverse that trend so that we can live in harmony in our beautiful city of Nairobi. Thank you. We will launch it. We have it ready. We are going to be releasing it before the official launch, but it's going to be there as we do the campaigns. We will look for a day and launch it. As you can tell, some of the ideas that we've been talking about are already being copied. The good thing is that those who are articulating and copying do not have the facts that have backed our manifesto. So we'll release with clear timetable and timeline of what we will do and what time we'll achieve it. The president has already endorsed the Nairobi senator for the governor. Do you consider this a blow? As you know, I'm running as an independent candidate. He, the president is, whatever he has done, he has done for his candidate. We are in competition with that candidate, and we will meet in the field with that candidate. The 
The seat here in contest is governorship, not presidency. So we are running for governorship of Nairobi, and we want the people of Nairobi to willingly elect one, their governor of choice, and more important, a governor who will work for them, a governor who has a track for working for them. I think that's the most important thing for the people of Nairobi. We want to ease traffic. We want to have garbage collection. We want to take care of our hawkers and, of, and, uh, and the informal sector so that they are not harassed in the city permanently. We'd like to take care of everybody who lives in Nairobi. And I think that is what will count on the 8th of August when we decide and determine who the next governor is. Thank so you. The independent candidates have uh, supported the election of President Uhuru Kenyatta. Do you? Every candidate has a right to support whoever they want to uh, support, and I think that's the most important thing. As I say, the contest here remains for the seat of Nairobi. Thank you. Hey. Hiya. Leo tumepata nafasi ya kupewa wa. Peter Kenneth there, um, just addressing the media right after being cleared by the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission. He says he's ready, they want mature politics, and they want to tell the people what they will be able to do for them. But there's an interesting question that he has been asked, that President Uhuru Kenyatta sort of endorsed uh, Sonko for that particular city, says, but the president was basically just campaigning uh, for the Jubilee candidate. As you're well aware, he's running as an independent. So that's the conversation we'll have with Kevin and Joshua in studio. Allow me now to cross over to our Victor Ogale, who's on the trail of President Uhuru Kenyatta, who's expected to make his first stop at Al Kalau. Victor, I'm sorry I had to cut you short. Mm -hmm. You're talking about the expectations of the residents on the ground, even as they wait for the president? Well, uh, remember the last time the head of state and his deputy were here in Nyandarua County was uh, in uh, early February during the mass voter registration mobilization. And uh, that is the last time the people of this particular county set foot. And here in Olkalao, the mood is that of the one to hear what the president is going to say. Uh, a few of the locals that we were talking to, they were like, the president has gone to other places. You've seen him uh, campaign in other places. Now it is time for him to come here. We also want to see what, as they popularly call him, Kamwana. We want to see what Kamwana is going to tell us here in Old Kalau. And also, uh, despite it being an election hearing period, um, the campaign mood is here with us in the entire nation. The head of state is also expected to uh, rather take stock of what the government has done, major projects such as the um, Nyahururu Water Project, which is a project that uh, will cost the government $1.2 billion. The setting up of dialysis machines at the uh, Old Kalau Sub-County Hospital as well as the Nyahururu Referral Hospital. Uh, issues to do with uh, matters of health, uh, setting up of the Kenya Medical Training College, both here in Old Kalau and in Nyahururu, which is uh, 28 kilometers from um, Old Kalau. Also, when you go to matters, politics, remember the um, particular aspirant who won during the party primaries for the Jubilee Party. We have um, Francis Kimemia who will be running for the gubernatorial race. We have Faith Gitao for the women representative. We also have uh, Mwangi Diomi, former planning minister for the uh, member of parliament, for the senatorial uh, position. So, Linda, indeed, we're going to have a little bit of politics. We're going to have a little bit of a developmental agenda uh, here playing center stage here in Olkalao. Linda? Mm, trust me. The official campaigns are here, so you're going to hear a lot of politics. You're going to hear a lot of what the president will be sort of pledging if he gets re-elected. Apart from the president and the deputy president of Gale, are you hearing of any other leaders accompanying him? Well, uh, indeed, uh, you expect uh, devolution, CS, Mwangi Kinjuri. Uh, Mwangi Kinjuri is a native of Kipipiri, so definitely this is just um, a few kilometers from here. He's going to come. And also, I uh, remember... When the president comes, you know, there is a possibility of uh, uh, cabinet secretaries tagging along. Remember also they launched the Old Kalau Lighting Project. So there is a possibility of the energy CLs, Keter, also uh, setting foot here together with the president. As I've told you, there is the water project. So you, there is a possibility also of Eugene Omalo coming. And remember also, this is also a chance for various aspirants to sell themselves. So, I mean, uh, because there is a free crowd, courtesy of the president is deputy. So even if you're given a minute or two, 
uh, on the podium or even introduced and told like, hey, Linda, can you just wave to the crowd and introduce yourself? That is a plus for you if you're seeking a vote from which, uh, for whichever level, be it the member of county assembly, be it uh, for the women representative. Well, that's just, those are just some of the <laughs> residents of all Kalau just selling his wares. I can see he's selling driving licenses, uh, just taking advantage of the numbers of people, the influx of people that have come here in um, all Kalau. Linda, also remember from here, the head of state is going to go to Nyahururu. From Nyahururu is going to go down to Subuki, Kabazi, uh, making stops at the various shopping centers. Uh, remember, today is just the commencement of his three day tour of both Nyandarwa and Nakuru counties. Uh, from Subuki, he's going to go to Nakuru and then he's going to address the public at uh, section 58. Uh, there is an interchange as you enter Nakuru from Nyahururu. Then from there, tomorrow is going to go to uh, Kuresoi, Molo, before uh, rather finishing uh, his tour of Nakuru County on Sunday. Linda? Listen, Ogale, thank you so much. Let me know when, let us know when the president finally gets there and maybe we can listen into what he has to say. Allow me now to take us back to Kasarani. I understand uh, Miguna Miguna is back there. Could you take a look at what's happening there now? There we go. Okay, so those are live pictures from Kasarani this morning. Miguna, Miguna uh, just before the IEBC presenting his papers. Remember yesterday he was turned back by the IEBC because he presented his papers in a wrong format. They were supposed to be in Excel format. Um, and um, we understand that now he's back there to collect his certificate. We were speaking to Patrick Amimo earlier on, and he said he presented the right format yesterday in the evening. So today what he's just basically doing there is um, uh, picking his uh, clearance certificate from uh, the IEBC. Remember, he's contesting for the Nairobi seat as an independent uh, candidate. Um, yesterday, like I mentioned, uh, IEBC uh, refused to take um, his uh, documents because they were in JPEG format instead of Excel as required by the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission. He's back there this morning. We are hoping that he can get his uh, clearance certificate um, any moment uh, from now. Um, and th that, of course, just adds to the number of uh, uh, um, <clears throat> candidates who are in the gubernatorial race in the county of Nairobi. Here, it is the 11, 11, 68, 68, 4, 4, and this is 2, Z. This is Z, okay. 4, this two. Z, 2. It is 2. It is 2. 4, 2. Miguna is duly nominated Thank you. to contest the Nairobi gubernatorial election mm -hmm. position. Congratulations for coming to this. Thank you. Here you go. Now the paparazzi can take the pictures. <laughs> one thing, one thing. Must come. There you go. Yes, I want to give you <laughs> Thank you. This side, thank you. <laughs> this side, this side. This side, this side. This side. Oh, you, you would like to... Greeting the art. Running, greeting, greeting the art. Certificate. Greeting the art. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You would like to, to see it. Proper. Now we have not left. I'll give you a short page there so that you can report. Running it. Both of you. Thank you. 
from there? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you can hold it. I'm not going to hold the things. I'm not going to hold the microphone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. How are you feeling today? And how different will your campaign be from the rest? Uh, I'm feeling the same way I felt yesterday. And, uh, no, I was facing the lady who asked the question. Uh, please, you are a journalist, don't argue. Let me address you, all right? We are very pleased with my running mate. Please, can you just allow her to have some space? All right? With my running mate that we've come today to collect our nomination certificate. The process ended yesterday and we were not blocked. We were cleared yesterday, but I signed the nomination certificate today, and we have collected it. So ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be a different campaign from the rest of our opponents. As I have told the country before, our opponents comprise just one thing, there are a group of people that have used their positions of power to loot the public resources in Kenya. So we have Kidero Evans, who bankrupted Mumias, and who has continued to loot the government and the county of Nairobi. And the Auditor General has said that Kidero Evans has looted more than 100 billion. We are going to put a stop to that. Then we have Mr. Mike Movisonko, which is not actually his real name, because the name that he used before he went to prison in Shimolatewa is different. It's called Juma. So the man who went to jail and escaped from jail and tried to become somebody else in Nairobi and has been peddling drugs in Nairobi and has made money peddling drugs and has now been nominated by the Jubilee Party to be the governor of Nairobi is not just unqualified, is a criminal, is a crook, and I'm going to deconstruct him as much as I'm going to deconstruct Mr. Kidero Evans. Then you have PK, Peter Kenneth, the one who was just cleared a few minutes ago. Peter Kenneth bankrupted Kenya Re. This is not just an unqualified Kenyan, but one that also looted the public resources to death. Now you have this team here, the team of Karen and myself, made of people with integrity. Karen went to a Catholic University of East Africa and graduated in 2010 with a degree in sociology and has worked and now is a businesswoman. She's 29 years of age. She's both youth and a woman. And we are going to transform the city using our manifesto, which is based, number one, on the elimination of corruption at City Hall. Number two, injecting the culture of integrity in public service. Number three, building infrastructure, infrastructure, infrastructure. Roads, housing, light rail, the subway system, solid waste management system, so that we can eradicate unemployment, we can eradicate the traffic gridlock, we can eradicate the filth that is seen in Nairobi. We can build humane, affordable homes for everyone so that the city can prosper. So I will, at this moment, give my running mate just a short opportunity to be able to say something, and then you can ask your questions. Well, I'd like to say, like my governor has said, our campaign is going to be very different based on integrity, like he has said. So for me, I am calling now to all the women and all the youth. I am here and I am telling you, it is time we make a change. It is time Nairobi became something else for the better. Thank you. Karen Wanjiko Wangenya is my name from Central Province. Cent former Central Province. <laughs> Okay, so Miguna Miguna has just been cleared by the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission. <clears throat> and according to him, all his opponents have issues, integrity issues. 
and they shouldn't uh, be voted in on August 8th. I will pick the minds of uh, Kevin Sowidi and Joshua Kipto who are in studio with me. But before we do that, let's cross over to Kisumu. We have Arashi Ronald there for us and we expect uh, Raila Odinga, that is the NASA flag bearer in Kisumu as well today. Rashid, can you hear me? Good morning. Before we talk about um, the visit by uh, Raila Odinga in Kisumu, allow me to speak a little bit on the gubernatorial race in Kisumu. Anyang Nyongo has just been cleared. Of course, we also have Rangu how do you see this race playing out? Of course, uh, what, 67 days now to the election? How do you see this race playing out? Uh, this is quite interesting here in Kisumu or Linda. And of course, yesterday we saw Ranguma, who is an independent candidate, uh, submitting his papers to the IEBC. And today morning at around 10, uh, Professor Nyang Nyongo, uh, the ODM candidate, also presented his paper to IEBC, opening uh, a battle, a battle, I call it a battle royale. Remember, uh, it, in Kisumu here, Anyang Nyongo happens to come from the same region. Uh, and, uh, uh, and, 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 and of course, uh, Ranguma comes from Nkano, and both of them have taken their running, uh, picked their running mate from uh, the larger and your catch area. So, of course, uh, it's a question, it's a game of mind, it's a game of numbers here, Linda. Uh, and, and, and of course, uh, what will happen if the people now to decide in Kisumu here, Linda? Yeah, let's see how that plays out, Rashid. Listen. Um, Raila Odinga is expected there um, any moment from now. Tell me a little bit about why he's there. There's a meeting I understand they're holding today. Yeah, Linda, th th this afternoon Raila Odinga is having a, minute, uh, a meeting with uh, all uh, uh, ODM candidates from the, the larger Nyanza region. And of course, Nyanza is his political bedrock. Uh, and they say you must, when you are going for, uh, for a battle, you must put your house in order. So I think Raila Odinga is trying to put his Nyanza house in order before he goes out to battle for that, uh, to seek votes from other regions. And, and of course, remember, there is, this is the first time we are witnessing a bigger number of independent candidates in Nyanza. It has never been here, uh, like that before. There are very many independent candidates uh, in, in Nyanza, for example, in all the four, uh, four counties. Migori, we have Ochilo Ayako. Uh, in, uh, in Homa Bay, we have Oyugi Magwanga. Uh, in, in, uh, we have uh, in Siaya. We also have uh, Nicholas Gumbo. And in Kisumu, we have the incumbent, uh, uh, Ranguma, also running as an independent. And of course, Raila has actually made it clear about la three weeks ago that ODM is not going to support any independent candidate, saying that independent candidates are just Jubilee candidates, like Jubilee candidates, and they're actually competing against their own, I mean, ODM, so he's not going to support them. And of course, that, that is the message that his, uh, his brigades have been, have been putting across Nyansa here. And of course, now he's going to tell them, hi guys, we have to ensure that it's ODM, 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 ODM. So it's putting his house in order, Linda. All right, let's wait and see... <clears throat> How that uh, meeting is going to go, um, we expect uh, NASA flag bearer Raila Odinga in Kisumu any moment from now. Um, that should be an interesting meeting, putting in mind what happened yesterday. Um, le allow me now to cross over to my colleague Jeff Kirui, who's uh, in Bomet. Um, we are focusing on some of the aspirants there. Uh, Joyce Laboso is expected to go before the IBC to get her papers cleared. Kirui, can you hear me? Well, a very good morning, uh, Linda. Yes, indeed, I can hear you. Let's talk about Joyce Laboso and the fact that, uh, and, and the race, really, that is in Bomet County. Well, uh, Linda, specifically this area, I mean, this uh, behind me is a Sotik town. Uh, this is Sotik constituency where Dr. Joyce Laboso has been serving for uh, two terms uh, after, of course, taking over from her uh, late sister, Lona Laboso, who was involved in the plane crash together with the late Kipkalia Kones. And, of course, this particular county has, is, has been, uh, uh, is actually a two or three between uh, Governor Isaac Ruto, who is now a co-principal in the NASA coalition, and, of course, Dr. Joyce 
Louis Laboso, who is the deputy speaker of the National Assembly vying under the Jubilee ticket. And yesterday, Governor Ruto uh, was actually cleared by the IEBC to vie, or rather to uh, vie for that position to retain his seat as the uh, county, uh, Bomet County governor. But of course, the, uh, he is facing stiff competition from uh, Dr. Joyce Laboso, who uh, actually, uh, as per the politics of the county, uh, it is now becoming a race between NASA and, uh, of course, Jubilee Party. And uh, as we speak right now, I've been informed that Dr. Joyce Laboso is having a prayer meeting uh, in her residence before now proceeding, uh, leading her supporters to uh, Bomet County, which is about uh, 40, 45 kilometers from here. And of course, uh, there have been arrangements from every sub-county, Bomet East, uh, of course, there is the Chepalungu, there is Konoin, and of course, there is Bomet Central. Every uh, Jubilee candidate has actually been, uh, has actually to mobilize supporters, uh, which they will escort Dr. Joyce Laboso to present her papers uh, later in the day today. And of course, um, Bomet County is actually the epicenter of uh, politics in the South Rift region. Remember, being the area where uh, the animosity between the Deputy President William Ruto and Isaac Ruto played a role in this particular county. And of course, we'll be waiting to see whether it will be the Deputy President William Ruto trumping or it will be the uh, uh, Bomed Governor Isaac Ruto, who has openly defied the Jubilee government, even forming his own party, uh, that is the Chama, Chama Shinani. And as I understand, that is uh, the Kanu Party, Independence Party, and of course, CCM Party are actually striking a deal to work together in this particular county. Of course, there is the Senate seat where uh, uh, Secretary General uh, uh, of Kanu Secretary General Nick Salat is actually vying for the Senate ticket. And there is a Chama Chamashinani candidate, Dr. Uh, Stephen uh, Kosge. Uh, but there have been, uh, the Dr. Stephen Kosge actually, we understand, has been prevailed upon to step down in favor of uh, Salat. Well, and of course, uh, today we will be bringing you the main uh, focus, which is the Bomet County, as we expect Dr. Joyce Laboso to submit her papers at 2 p.m. today. Linda. All right, Jeff Kirui for us in Sotik. Jeff, thank you. Keep an eye on that for us. We'll cross back to you in a bit. So I need to give you some... <clears throat> um, ...information that I'm just getting with respect to the clearance by the IEBC. Anne Waiguru has just been cleared by the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission to vie as a governor in Kirinyaga, in Kirinyaga County. Uh, we also know that Babu Owino has also been cleared to run in Embakasi. Uh, so that is uh, what we're getting for you right now. So this morning, what we've been able to gather for you, one, uh, Miguna Miguna has just been cleared by the IEBC. Peter Kenneth has been cleared by the IEBC. And Yang Nyong as well, Anwai Guru and uh, Babu Owino. We are still keeping an eye on some of the aspirants who are expected to, who will be meeting IEBC before the close of the day. Remember, this is the deadline. We also do know that William Kabogo is presenting his papers to the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Committee mission remember at some point he bowed out of the race then said after consulting family and friends he decided now to come back and run as an independent so it will be interesting to see how that race uh, specifically plays out um, in the coming days so those are the <coughs> developing stories that you're getting for you and like Rashid Ronald mentioned you have Raila Odinga also in Kisumu meeting uh, some leaders on the ground will be crossing over to listen to what he has to say. So what's currently playing on your screen um, are supporters of Wahome Kaburu who are dancing, Gakuru actually, I beg your pardon, who was cleared by the IEBC. So we have his supporters uh, dancing outside there, of course, uh, very happy. Um, he's a Jubilee candidate. Uh, we'd like to listen in just a little bit to what some of his supporters are saying.
right, so those are supporters of Wahome Gakuru, um, who won the Jubilee nomination in Nyeri County. Of course, he beat Samuel Wamathai, and he hopes uh, now to be the next governor in the county of Nyeri. Um, allow me to now have a conversation in studio with the guests in studio. I have Joshua Kipto and Kevin Sowidi. And I'd love to pick the comment on the candidature of Miguna Miguna as we set up an interesting bite, actually, from Chirao Ali Makwere, which says the president for the next conversation we'll be having here. Uh, but for now, what are your thoughts about Miguna Miguna? At least today I expected Miguna Miguna to come up with something new, not the old everyday lines of looted, looting cartels. I thought Miguna Miguna was too good for that. But let me also tell you that he has put his ignorance a lot in the public. Mm. When you keep on talking about uh, dealing with the traffic in Nairobi, remember... 80% of the roads in Nairobi that has traffic belong to the central government, not to the governor. There's nothing the governor will do about Mombasa Road, Langata Road, Ngong Road, and, and these other major roads. They belong to the central government. So the blame lies squarely with the central government on dealing with the traffic. The other thing they keep on talking about is garbage. One thing you must know, garbage is not something you can take every piece of plastic one by one and take to Andorra. They have to be collected somewhere and then transported. Mm. As the collection awaits, they go take photos and tell Nairobians, you see how there's a lot, so much But garbage. he says he's the best candidate. He says the rest of his opponents are quote-unquote criminals. None has been found to be a criminal. None of them. Is that a, a good line to begin his candidature, to begin his campaign? And first of all, you, you cannot keep on that your first paragraph of every speech is about what you think about, about the others. Yeah. You need to tell us exactly how you are going to do what you're going to do. He's telling us what he's going to do, but he's not telling us how because he doesn't even know how. He doesn't even know how much money is available at City Hall for development. He has no idea. Kept. So when he, you hear him talking about things worth hundreds of billions that he will do, and that kind of money is not even there in the five years, then mm. he's displaying his ignorance to the running of a city like Nairobi. I think Miguna Miguna should be treated the way he is, with con 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 contempt. And also you must know, Miguna Miguna has not told us of the eight presidential candidates. Which one is his candidate? That is also very important to Nairobians. <laughs> that Kipto, is how they will vote you. Kipto, what are your thoughts? Now, a quick answer is that Miguna belongs to the um, future campaign methodology in the sense that we'll be more discussing issues rather than personalities and the parties. So. <coughs> How I find him is two-way. Mm. You know, an incumbent governor always faces opposition from yeah, other obviously. candidates. So you'll always pick out the discussion or the agenda of the other candidates. One is to poke holes on the incumbent. That is always given. Secondly, politics is about competition. One of, win one of the ways of winning is by pointing or painting your opponents in a particular way to drive the crowd towards you. That is one component. But it doesn't become the ultimate picture. It can form part of your half picture by saying, look at the rest, then, mm. look, at then look at me. So when it comes to me, that is where I think Meguna also needs to come out. There's something I think that's just lacking on his part is he's been mentioning that they have a manifesto and he's been out there complaining that other aspirants are also plagiarizing his own manifesto. I wish part of his conversation would be, my manifesto has one, two, three. He's tried, in a very small way, he's tried giving So you think the instead bites. of pointing fingers, he should be saying, this is what no, I want no, to do? I'm not asking him to stop doing <coughs> this for this. It's the whole package works. One of the way, you know, when it comes to campaigning, that's why you've, you've even seen the opposition campaigning. They have to pinpoint the failures of Jubilee. Yeah. That is part of the game. So pointing fingers at the opponents is one way of it. Then the second bit of it is also to sell your agenda. But importantly, maybe to answer uh, his concern, uh, for, the, for the Nairobi gubernatorial race, two aspects may play out. One, it may be what influence the two major coalitions will have. And if their influence will be significant, which may be anticipated, then Meguna is kind of going to suffer from that. Mm. If the gubernatorial race will be between the two major coalition and the debate will be between the two coalition, mm. then that's where it comes. And you remember the last, the last yes. time, I think a couple of days ago, the president actually endorsed Sonko. Endorsed Sonko. And then, of course, the NASA Laila wing will also endorse yeah. Kidero. So if they plant in the voter that the choice for Nairobi governor it's should go hand in hand with the presidential, then that kind of leaves it. But that doesn't take away. You should also realize that in these elections, independence will also make a bit. So in my opinion, I think it is good also to start 
start from there, mm -hmm. where I suspect going forward in the next elections will be more issue oriented than individual or than the personality. So. Mm -hmm. It is one start from the rest. And then more importantly, it is also a chance for, I think, the entire team to go out there funding and looking for supporters mm. in the sense that I think that will be the biggest challenge as to how Meguna will now transition and go out there, attract those crowds, talk and mobilize, as he says. That will be the challenge. And I think that's where the... In fact, that is where now the game begins and, okay. and it becomes a Listen, bit I need, I need to cross over to Mombasa because it sets the tone for the next conversation touching on Chirao Ali Mwakwere's sentiments a couple of... Actually, I think that was yesterday. I, I remember the president actually pointed him out uh, and said uh, he needs to keep off uh, the backyard of Jubilee and, and I will play that for you then you can listen in a little bit. But now that is uh, Suleiman Shabhal who is also presenting his papers uh, to the IEBC. Remember, his uh, Jubilee's candidate in the county of Mombasa hoping to unseat uh, Ali Hassan Joho in the upcoming general election. Um, so he's presenting his papers this morning. Remember, as, like I mentioned, today is the deadline for all aspirants to present their papers to the IEBC. question is whether or not Shabhal will be able to unseat Ali Hassan Joho in the election. Right, so that is uh, Suleiman Shabhal presenting his papers to the IEBC. He's one of the gubernatorial aspirants in the county of Mombasa. Um, he is a Jubilee candidate. He will be up against Ali Hassan Joho, um, of course, the ODM candidate. He'll be up against Senator Mombasa Senator Hassan Omar uh, on uh, Wiper, and of course, Nyali Member of Parliament Hezron Awiti as well. So that's what's currently happening at the coast. We are keeping an eye, like I mentioned, on every single thing that's happening in the country. Now, allow me to have another interesting conversation. That, uh, all right, so just before we speak about Aichirao um, Ali Mokwere, allow me to still stay in Mombasa. We expect Shabhal to address the press any moment from now. He is among the four candidates who are fighting for that particular seat in the county of Mombasa. He is, of course, vying for that ticket on a Jubilee um, ticket. Let's see how far that goes, whether or not he'll be able to unseat uh, Ali Hassan. Or remember, the Jubilee Party leadership has been at the coast to try and campaign for him and ensure that he gets to unseat Ali Hassan Joho. But it's not the only headache that Ali Hassan Joho now has. He also has to deal with Mombasa Senator Hassan Omar, who will be vying for that seat on a wiper ticket, and Hezron Awiti as well. And they had quite a spat yesterday during the Madraka Day celebrations in Mombasa, uh, basically a show of might between Ali Hassan Joho and Hezron Awiti. We're expecting him, uh, um, Suleiman Shabhal, to speak speak to the press any moment from now. So those are live pictures that we are getting for you from the county of Mombasa, Suleiman Shabhal has just been cleared by the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission to run for the Mombasa gubernatorial seat. He's running on a Jubilee uh, ticket, and he's actually on record saying he will do much better than Ali Hassan Joho has in the last uh, five years. And I remember he said he has one agenda, to take the governor's seat uh, from ODM. And he was quite categorical that they will get to a point where they will succeed. Um, he's in Mombasa. Let's wait and see and listen in a little bit to what he has to say just moments after being cleared. I remember Ali Hassan Joho was also cleared. Um, I believe that was yesterday. And there was a little bit of anxiety at some point when uh, IBC officials um, asked for his uh, academic papers, specifically KCSA uh, papers. Uh, there was a moment of anxiety there, but the minute it was cleared, of course, that set the stage for a very serious duel um, in the county of Mombasa. So we're waiting for Suleiman Shabhal um, to 
give an address to the press. Allow me now to still stay in Mombasa, but then focus on a different uh, uh, aspirant, that is Chirao Ali Mwakwere. The reason why we're having this conversation in studio today is because there has been um, sort of an exchange. Chirao Ali Mwakwere, who defected to the opposition, um, has apparently made um, allegations that on land distribution and exploitation of local minerals, wealth, the subject of his campaign against um, Governor Mvuri and President Uhuru Kenyatta a couple of days ago warned uh, Mwakwere to stop abusing him or else he will expose his past misdeeds. Let's listen to what Chirao Ali Mwakwere had to say in response to what the president said. Shirao Ali Mokore is a very clean man, and everybody knows. Everybody knows that. I've never taken anybody's land, not even a quarter of an inch. If anybody has any complaint, then he should put documentary evidence on the table for everybody to see. I'm a very, very clean man. And whatever I say is the absolute truth, because I support my presentation with official documents. There has been injustice to coastal people on matters of land. Government after government, except the government of President uh, uh, Mwai Kibaki, have just been making empty promises. They all acknowledge that there has been historical injustice to coastal people. That is a fact. But then when you ask them what they have done to, to, to eliminate the problem, they have nothing to say. And when we talk about it, they warn us not to mention anything about land. Okay, that is a conversation I'll be having with uh, Joshua and Calvin in a bit. Allow me to take a short break. Stay with me. I'll be back. News. For the first time ever, Kenyan football meets Tanzanian football. It's the Maiden Super Cup for 5th to 11th June at Uhuru Stadium in Dar es Salaam. Watch AFC Leopards, Gormahia, Tasca, and Naku All Stars battle it out with Tanzanian counterparts Yanga, Simba, Singida, and Jangombe. It will be exciting. All action will be live on KTN and KTN News. Make a date. Super Cup. Brought to you in association with Sport Pesa. Okedi, Ukimwi, Ndudu, ama kitaka unaweza ita HIV and AIDS, ni ugonjwa wa moja ngori imeogopewa mpaka na mabist wa East kwa mtaa. Research na study imefanywa kuhusu hii ugonjwa, lakini swali ni very simple. Je, tunawezaje translate hii maneno into programs and policies? This is KTN News. So you're watching New Centre. Thank you for staying with us. Just before we took that break, we are talking about Chirao Ali Makwere. Guys, so the president says, to be specific, stop abusing me or, I'll, or else I'll expose your past misdeeds. Chirao Ali Makwere, on the other hand, says, do not threaten me. Uh, Kevin, what are your thoughts? Uh, for a moment, I agree with Chirao Ali Makwere. I never, agree, I never agree with him in the past because Makwere... Uh, normally looks for the best opportunity and seizes it. Mm. Uh, but this time round, he said the truth. Even when the government says they are going to give Sijui so many uh, titles in Mombasa and elsewhere, they are really not giving land. But you see, what bothers me is, yes. this is a man who was a former Kenyan ambassador to Tanzania, yes. and here's a president telling him, you either desist um, and do peaceful campaigns, or I will expose all your ills. As a president, you know this guy has ills, and you're not exposing them until a point where... And he was the last employer of this man before the guy walked away. He didn't even fire him. He walked away. So that is why 
I agree with Makwere. Makwere is the one telling us the truth. And this thing of title again and again, we are giving titles, the president has ordered so and so to give so and so title. Title is not land, they are pieces of paper. Mm. This land they purports to be giving people titles on, these people already own them. Okay. Albeit without titles, they are enjoying all the fruits of okay. these lands. Even if he doesn't give them those titles, some other regime will give them in future. They can even go to lands and work out those titles. So this idea of telling people how you are giving them titles, do for them something that is worth the taxes they okay. pay. Kipto, what are your thoughts? Uh, you either... A testament of the morality of our politics. <laughs> Look here. <laughs> Today I'm your friend simply because I'm in your yeah, camp. Tomorrow and, and I'm not. You can, in fact, you can switch it so many times. Yeah. It's so interesting because the same Wakwere has been working with the president for quite some time. Yeah. Even in 2013, I think he was part of Jubilee. Yeah. So uh, when the president threatens, I don't think he meant that he has anything really to showcase. It's just a political threat. And that's why I would think... Yeah, to some extent, it also, as I say, helps Mokwere because he, he again looks to up as if he's facing off the president. Mm -hmm. So when I say it's the morality of our politics, it's exactly what happens. That's why I always feel if as citizens, we are played supporting? out. In fact, we are the ones who are always played out here because the same, same guys always switch camp at will and at ease. And everyone forgets because, look here, if, if I'm to flip the same coin, I'll just take, for example, Ababu Namwamba. Mm. For three, four years, he was so anti-Jubilee, even say that his blood... If yeah, with Jubilee, with <laughs> he, would actually, yeah, yeah, he would actually say um, uh, he would suffer some hemorrhage. Now he's here being the supporter in chief. So it's the same thing. So that's how I always feel as a, as a country or as citizens. Politicians always play us at will and at ease. The way you don't they think want. Don't the president has anything against No, there's Mokwere. nothing. He employed him. He's been his guy. He's simply. Those are so grapes. He's moved on and gone. <laughs> I know. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't uh, have an issue with Mokwere. It's politics. Mm. I'm sure Mokwere notes that the electorate down there possibly are anti-Jubilee. So for him to get the seat, for him to have any chance of getting the seat, it would suit him being with the opposition. Don't also forget that the same Mokwere were never at the same page with Raila. Under the Grand Coalition government, yeah. he, he was the abuser in chief. Of mm. the of Raila, he was the abuser in chief. So what has changed now? So it's just the usual shenanigans, and this is the silly season, as we call and it. This is politics. This is we the are getting silly, to the silly season, season where everything. So we gets have like sixty what, sixty six. After others, when you sit back and look, and they'll say, okay, how did this happen? <laughs> Joshua Kipto, Kevin Sowede, gentlemen, thank you so much you. for being part of News Center today. We've looked at a couple of issues that have uh, been cropping up on the political scene, gentlemen. Thank you for your time for being part of News Center. Have a good weekend. People, you're watching News Center. Thank you so much for staying with us. Allow me to allow my guests uh, to leave as we create time for uh, what's trending. And just before we get to what's trending, let's get to Eldoret, where we understand that Oscar Sudi um, is uh, before the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission is hoping to get that clearance at some point. There were concerns being raised about his academic qualifications. We are yet to see whether or not IBC will clear him. And if indeed he will show up with the, his uh, certificates, uh, that is what we are waiting to see. Uh, whether or not it will be um, cleared by the IEBC. There we go. Those are live pictures from Eldoret Oscar Sudi waiting to be cleared by the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission. Our Elvis Koske is on the ground for us. Earlier on, we spoke to him at the beginning of this show, and he was saying there were concerns over his academic qualifications. Let's wait and see whether or not the IEBC will clear him. Um, um, remember, the deadline for that clearance is today.